the microbiome, essential oils, two of my favorite topics. And today I want to discuss with you if essential oils negatively impact our microbiome. Because there's a lot of information out there that say that essential oils or botanical medicine have antibacterial properties or antimicrobial properties. And because of that, these chemical constituents that is actually a compilation of synergy could actually produce harm to our beneficial bugs that are in our gut, similar to antibiotics. Is this a true statement? Inquiring minds want to know, so stick around. My name is Dr. Sarah, and I'm going to discuss with you if essential oils actually harm our gut microbiome. Okay, let's just kind of back up a little bit and start discussing the microbiome and how we got to where we are today with this concern of do various interventions that we're using impact them? So around the 19th century, it was discovered that there are little microorganisms that are on our bodies and they were found to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. In other words, these little microorganisms were found where infections lie. And it was assumed that they caused these disease processes and that we should eradicate them. So one of the goals in medicine has been since then to eradicate and kill off these little buggers that were causing so much harm. We used inoculations, antiseptics, chemotherapeutics, and around the 20th century, uh, angelic music, that was pretty bad. But what happened was antibiotics were invented and we thought they were our saving grace, right? That they could kill these really harmful bacteria that were causing some of these serious infections. The problem was, is that we were starting to see that some of our medications and drugs were not as effective as we had hoped they would be aimed at this specific, uh, you know, specific organism. And in 2007, the human microbiome came into play, specifically the Human Microbiome Project, which is a five-year five year long international effort that sought to characterize and thought, sought to categorize microbial populations that existed in our gastrointestinal tract and throughout our whole body and how they were involved in health and disease. And what we found was that we had a lot of good little critters in our bodies and they were associated with various physiological functions that actually were amenable to helping our health. Now, granted, there were other microbes in our body that when they got out of balance could overtake our delicate balance of microorganisms to cell ratio and cause harm. And a healthy body was able to keep those little guys in check, have the good ones help us out while the bad ones were doing what they needed to do in the background and we coexisted quite happily. And what happened was this emergence of literature, actually an absolute explosion about how the microbiome impacts everything from our, there's the gut brain connection. I've done posts on, and videos on the gut brain connection, the gut liver connection, the gut heart connection, the gut you fill in the blank connection. And you just Google or use your search engine of toy choice, duck, duck, go, anything related to microbiome and blank. And I bet you you're going to find a hit for that. So what does this have to do with essential oils? Like I said in the intro, what we were beginning to discover with the more we learned about this on in uninvestigated really organ organ system that we didn't know about that was made up of trillions of tiny microbes and their genetic information that's called the microbiome. So just a little step back here, guys. If you want to use a proper terminology, the microbiota is actually the microorganisms themselves. The microbiome is all of the population of those little guys with their genetic material and how that interplays with our cells function. So again, what we, what stepping back is that we found that with the use of antibiotics and antimicrobials, these organisms, we were killing off some of the good guys and it was actually creating 
side effects and harm in other disease processes. We learned that when our gut microbiome got off balance, there were psychiatric issues that could occur. There were heart issues that could occur. There were all of these various negative effects. So it came to reason as integrative practitioners and as doctors in general, we don't want to do any harm. So many people thought, heck, these have antibacterial properties. They're likely going to be causing the same thing. We better be mindful of this. Load our patients up with probiotics in case something happens where we cause this imbalance and, uh, you know, just do the minimum dose side of minimal dose for a short period of time. Here's the glitch. Or, um, what I found in the research does not support this. What we have now, now we're going to continue to learn more. And what I understand about botanical medicine, vitalism, and nature, nature ther therapy or natural interventions is different than when we biochemically try to manipulate a specific pathway or a specific aim or a specific critter, I guess, or pathogen in our system. There is a synergy in natural medicine that exists. So if you look at essential oils or herbs in general, they have various constituents in them. Sure, there's antimicrobial properties, but there's these other properties that come with them that also balance that out. They can act as polyphenols, which feed the good bugs. They can act as antioxidants, which decrease harm and lower inflammation, which would make it less hospitable for microbes to live there. They can um, offer our, they can offer, if they're herbs, they can offer us herb or different nutrients, right, to feed our bodies. They're essential oils. They have multiple, multiple actions, right? They can act in epigenetic ways. So what they're doing is they're actually affecting cellular processes and changing those different processes and impacting cellular signaling, neurotransmitters, inflammatory cytokines or, or signaling. They can impact, I talked about antioxidant, right? O oxidative stress, cellular stressors, uh, various other pathways of uh, vasodilation, vasoconstriction, physiological factors, how our brain functions. I mean, there's so much that they can do. And when we decrease stress in general, just with the aromatic properties, that's good for our microbiome. When we help ourselves sleep with essential oils, that's good for the microbiome. So in this article that was published in Townsend Letter, I decided to make it more widely available than just on my website. So I was grateful to have it published in Townsend Letter so that more physicians could also get access to the, the research that I found. And I tried to uncover everything about essential oils in the microbiome. And I found that there are sparse, or I'd like to see more robust evidence in humans, but there is an explosion of evidence in experimental studies and in animal studies that essential oils are selective in inhibiting pathogens while they benefit commensals. In fact, there were studies with rodents, with rabbits, with various other four-legged creatures and pigs that essential oils not only decrease pathogens, increase commensals, but actually help the intestinal lining become less permeable, which is good because when there's inflammation and that intestinal lining gets too permeable, what's supposed to stay in the intestines gets out and that can cause havoc in the body. We don't want that. We don't want this quote leaky gut going on too long. So that is a good thing. And then I did find also some human studies, human studies that validated especially for a specific kind of infection called um, methicillin-resistant staph aureus. There were several trials that actually used tea tree essential oil. The most effective dose was about 10%. And even there was one that compared it to actual um, prescription strength. And they found that not only did the essential oil actually decrease wound size and decrease colonization, but these specific oils in vitro also didn't cause resistance that specific antibiotics and, and synthetic drugs can cause. They also found in human trials a couple of trials that showed that it impacted the way that our body uses 
energy or metabolism, how it breaks down fat particularly or uses carbohydrates and how this impacts our body size. And in the same time, there was a study on metabolic syndrome in how essential oils decrease the acute and chronic infections that can occur when somebody has metabolic syndrome because of the dysbiosis as well. Dysbiosis is an imbalance in the microbes from the inflammation and blood sugar dysregulation. The essential oils actually decreased those acute infections and they also helped improve parameters of metabolic syndrome as body size decreased. I'm not a big proponent of, you know, woohoo weight loss and let's be obsessed with that. But in saying that, when we think of if certain, you know, adipose tissue is inflammatory and it's causing metabolic derangement, if we are giving antibiotic or, or substances that are antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and can modulate stress, it come to reason, you know, that there, there's also um, going to be benefit to, to that aspect. And maybe the body would not need excess adipose tissue. In fact, citrus oils actually have anti-lipase activity in, in vitro and in uh, animal studies. So uh, they did do a small study as well, where they looked at uh, fecal samples and looked at the microbiome there and found again, the essential oils did not produce harm uh, to commensals. So these beneficial bugs. So I am going to post the link to my post, which goes a little bit into more on the microbiome and then the actual full referenced article to Townsend letter. If you want to dig in and look at the references, I have them there. I have the links so that you can explore this more because I heard it said that it was magical thinking that these herbs or these essential oils are magic, that they can selectively just take the good and then get rid of the bad. And I once heard magic is science properly applied. It could also be that we're underestimating nature, just like we underestimated the power of the bacteria to become superbugs and mutants and sleuth at decoying our powerful interventions. So those are my thoughts. I bet this might be a little bit controversial. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the video description. And in the video description, again, check out, look for those links, look for additional resources. I offer training in essential oils to practitioners. I also offer community membership. I offer additional resources on wellness, naturopathic medicine, functional medicine. So be sure to check those out if you want to explore more and learn more. And I hope that you do. I want to thank you for joining me today. And I will wish you happy oiling and happy health. And I will talk to you again real soon. Can't wait to hear your comments. So be sure to put those in the video description. And if you like what you are hearing or you have any suggestions about what the next topic will be, also put those in the video description because it helps get the word out more. And I do think we need to have this discussion because it is inaccurate with the evidence we have now to be saying that natural modalities that are quote antimicrobial are actually harming the microbiome. It's more complicated than that. All right. See ya. Have a great one, everybody. And I'll talk to you soon.